the Red Bluff Jane Doe, identified as Rosemma Mendenhall from Eureka, California. This has less information than I normally try to work with, and only one blurry photo. But it appears in her final years, people dismissed Rose already, and I didn't feel like this channel should dismiss her also. Rose was 44 and had last been seen hitchhiking in 1990. Her sister actually reported her missing in 1988, and it appears she was from Eureka, California, but I can't confirm it. However, that's where the missing person report was filed. Someone stabbed Rose and pushed her into a culvert where she was found mummified in October of 1990, south of Red Bluff, California. They found surgical plates on her arm, but the serial number led nowhere. Her case remained cold until 2013, when an Oregon detective called with the news that a convicted serial killer was due to be released after serving only 20 years, which is impossible to believe as it is. There's no notation as to who the killer was. It's this reason they looked at Rose's murder. Turns out that when Rose's brother reported her missing, he gave his DNA in case she was found. And they also had a fingerprint from an arrest in Mendenhall, California. At this time, DNA was for the most part only being used to confirm identity if they were already identified through other means. However, her fingerprints weren't usable when she was found. But thank heavens they didn't give up. In the end, it was her DNA that was the key. They ran it in 2014, and in 2015, she would be identified as Rosemma Mendenhall. Rosa's sister told the police her last phone call from her sister was in 1993, which is impossible, but it highlights why it's so easy for women like Rose to fall off the radar. They aren't in continuous contact, and they move around a lot. Even if someone is inclined to report the missing, there is an issue of where to report. It also makes women like Rose a huge risk for those who have cruel intentions. Way too often, no one is looking for them because it's normal to be missing. And often, no one is very concerned when they drop out of sight because, after all, they often drop out of sight. Rosemma Mendenhall went unidentified for 25 years. She was found 500 miles from where she went missing. The Tucson Jane Doe, 1981, identified as Brenda Giroux. Brenda Giroux was just 20 years old when she left Nashua, New Hampshire, presumably with her boyfriend, John Kellhauser. She was never heard from again. Her family tried to find her, but the case went cold and they didn't know where to look. Unbeknownst to her family, she had been discovered the following year in Tucson, Arizona, near the fairgrounds. But that case was cold also, and Brenda had been labeled a Jane Doe. Then in 1995, a different case would accidentally break this case wide open. A woman named Diane Van Reith was living at the time in Arizona with her parents, while divorcing her husband, Don Stetchy, with whom she had two children. She left her parents' home that day to go to work, and she never arrived, and she was never heard from again. Her van was found abandoned, on the side of the road with the keys inside. The only prints other than hers found inside the van was that of a wanted man named John Kellhauser. When the police ran the prints, they quickly realized that Don Stetchy was actually an alias of John Kellhauser. Kellhauser was not a good man. He was violent, and the law didn't try very hard to keep him from harming others. The police had his prints on record because he was convicted of manslaughter in 1971, after shooting a 52-year-old man. He was sentenced to only seven years, and he was released after one. Eight years later, in 1979, Kellhauser was charged again with attempted murder, after shooting the boyfriend of an ex-girlfriend. He ran out on bail and moved to Arizona with Brenda Giroux. Early the next year, Brenda's body was found, and then, in 1995, Diane disappeared. In November of 1996, Kellhauser was convicted of armed assault with intent to murder in connection with the shooting in 1979. He would go on to be sentenced to 26 years in prison. Then, in May of 1999, they tried him again for his ex-wife's murder. For that killing, he pled no contest and he got 20 years. He would never say what happened to her body. Eventually, however, unrelated to that case, Authorities in Tucson were looking at the cold case of a young woman found near the fairgrounds in Tucson in April of 1981. 
Her cause of death was ligature strangulation. Her body would be exhumed in 2012, and investigators used her skull to reconstruct her face in hopes of identification. After the recreation, one of the investigators realized that the composite resembled the woman whose photo was inside John Kellhauser's wallet. Turns out that after all those years, Brenda's picture stayed in Kellhauser's wallet. Authorities believe the outdoor venue seen in the photo could have been back east and they circulated the photo they found online. They got lucky and it went viral. Eventually, someone in Brenda's family saw the photos and they were able to identify her. In September of 2015, it was officially announced that Brenda Giro of Nashua again had her name. The police did announce in 2015 that Kalhauser was the person of interest in Giro's death, but there's no indication six years after that now that he was ever even charged. Her father gave an interview in 2015 saying he was overwhelmed by the news of her death, saying she ran off and they had no idea what happened to her. He's sad but still doesn't know why she left. However, he is thankful that he knows what happened to her. Her brother Bill went on to tell reporters that she had called twice to speak to him over the years, though it's been too long for him to know exactly when the calls came. He accepted a collect call and was angry with her for running out on him. She apologized and she said that she found some turquoise that she thought he would like and she was going to mail it to him. And that she did. When it arrived, it had been stamped as coming from New Mexico. She called once more after this, pledging to come back and see him. But that was the last anyone ever heard from her. Kallhauser is still in prison. Diane Van Rees' body has never been found. And the children she had were adopted by a cousin. Brenda Marie Giraud went unidentified for 34 years. The Dana Point Jane Doe, identified as Holly Jo Glynn from Whittier, California. At 6.40 on the morning of September 20th, 1987, the body of a young Caucasian woman was discovered by joggers at the base of a cliff in Dana Point, California. The police concluded that she took her own life. She had two maps of Southern California. One map contained a taxi company's number. Little was known about the young woman. She appeared to be between 18 and 23. She was wearing a tan dress and men's underwear, all very worn, making them think it was secondhand clothing. She had light brown or strawberry blonde hair. She was 5 foot 3 to 5 8 and had freckles. It was not much to go on. They also felt she was either pregnant or had a DNC at one time. To people that often means an abortion, but it also could mean that she had one performed after a miscarriage. They were able to locate the taxi driver, who said he picked her up near a gas station and she said her car had broken down. She got a ride as far as the $18 she had on her would take her. The only clue as to who she was was a name that was embossed on her purse. It said Carol L. Pinkham. Eventually, they found the woman whose name was on the purse, but it was a dead end. Her purse had been stolen in 1975, 12 years prior to it being found. In 2011, one of Holly's classmates saw the recreation and immediately thought of her friend, Holly Jo Glynn. It turns out she had been trying to find Holly via social media. She had actually enlisted other high school mutual friends, and all of these friends were trying to find Holly. In 2014, they contacted the Help ID Me page on Facebook, and they relayed their suspicions. The Sheriff's Department was able to connect with their family in 2014. Her DNA was compared, and it was confirmed in 2015 that the Dana Doe was Holly Jo Glynn. According to some posts by her friends who went to high school with her, Holly had been battling some mental health problems, and she had been self-medicating while she struggled. Holly Jo Glynn went unidentified for 30 years, and she was found 50 miles away from where she went missing. That's it for today. Thanks everybody for watching and listening. If you could take a moment, please hit like and subscribe. Take care of yourselves and each other.